And just to prove it, <laughs> uh, we can actually put a breakpoint here, get in the browser and say something different and call it and we have the input value and we execute it and we have our result, whatever, and we return it. So that's the application that's doing the actual work. And it's very easy to debug it, just put a breakpoint and call it from the browser. Now this is kind of an ugly user interface. You don't want to do this. It's just see what's happening behind the scenes. What you want to do is instead uh, do this and you still get, I mean, I click on the button, I still got the same call in a slightly different fashion, but, and I'll remove the breakpoint, but we did the, the same request. Okay, so what's happening here? Let's look at the source code of, not actually of the Delphi side of the application, but let's look at the HTML side of the application, the HTML slash JavaScript side of the application. What we have here, if we look in the code, is actually quite simple. We have a login button. Okay, a button that's called reverse string that is hooked to a JavaScript function on reverse string click. And on reverse string click has this wonderful piece of code that does give me the value, the value of value field. And value field is the text edit, the input text. Call the reverse string method on the server, and I need to tell you a couple more things about that, and then show the result. Okay, so the actual magic, if you want to call it, is this is this call. Server methods call reverse string. Okay, this is based on one of the uh, include function includes that we have here, and specifically this server function JS, which I still don't know why it's parameterized, but it's always called server function JS, so whatever. Um, this is a file that we also have locally on the PC, so we can actually look it at design time. Um, this function is generated through this com oops, component here. So when we have a file request for that specific file, there is some source code, I'm not going to show you, that says if the date of that JavaScript file is older than the executable, then generate a new one using this proxy generator component that is set oops, as, well, I can stop it, as um, JavaScript REST generator, you have other options, and then it goes through this uh, metadata provider for actually producing the, uh, the JavaScript. So what basically does, it will inspect your class using RTTI, say, oh, hey, there is this, this method with these parameters, and will generate a JavaScript class dynamically that is, has the same methods and has the code hook to call into your class. So again, if we open it and we go down here, we see that there is this class constructor, T server methods one, it's a function returning an object, so it's kind of a class constructor. And it has a method, a equal string, and a method, a reverse string. This takes a parameter, and what it does, it basically creates the data, the, the REST request, and Creating, passing the proper parameters, and then uh, looks at the result object and ex extracts the information from the result object. So that's the way you, we automatically get uh, JavaScript easy, an easy way to call uh, the, our classes, even when the parameters are complicated, more than string to string, but even data sets and streams and other data structure from the JavaScript uh, source code. Okay, so that's how the application uh, works. So we have these server-side components, the server class, the server itself, transport component, you can use TCP, IP, HTTP, or in this case, the web broker integration. There is a specific mechanism for mapping URLs to classes and methods. So now we've just 
only use the get operation, but you can also implement the post, put, and delete operations with specific name uh, mappings. By default, you return JSON, but you can also customize the result. Um, and the idea is you use JavaScript or, and or jQuery in the browser to create the client-side application. And that's up to you. I mean, you can just ask for a JavaScript expert to create your the best JavaScript application and just make calls to your Delphi server. Okay, the two things are really kind of separate by default. Core features that you get for free is sessions management. So what happens actually is that the user use, is generally cookie based, although you can force it to pass a parameter, an extra parameter in the, in the methods, in the, um, in between pages in JavaScript. But it's generally based on a cookie. You, you get a session cookie the first time, and then the same cookie is passed back and forth in the, in the rest calls. So you know who is calling you, and you can, and there is automatically a session object that is created. And you, in XE, you could save name value pairs in the session object. Now you can attach an object to the session object, so a specific object for each, for each user. Um, there is authentication built in. Um, every time a new user comes in, you can ask for, you can say that a page requires authentication. <coughs> the, actually, a REST call requires authentication you get a user login, a login mechanism. You implement the login the way you want, looking through the database or whatever. But what happens is that you can assign a user to a group, and then you can handle, <coughs> you can uh, ha decide which users, which groups of users can call which methods. These are programmatically, there is an author, on authorization global method. You say, hey, this user is calling this method, yes or no. Or you can attach an attribute to each function, to each method, to determine if the user is allowed. So you basically specify the roles, the user roles, the user groups that are allowed to call a given method. <coughs> a user can have multiple roles, so you can have. It's quite flexible. It's quite powerful. That's it. And we might get to some of, some of the. Um, actually, I might show you one demo that has the full authorization. It should be down here, code sessions. Yes. Um, so that's very similar. Well, it's based, it was built in XE, so there's a single class for everything, a single module for everything. There is an author authentication manager. And what you do is here on, on user authenticate, what you can do is you can determine, this is kind of a silly way, if the user is, is a good user or not. Whatever. OK. Now what you can do is you can add the user in roles. OK. So you can do user roles, add and add one or more roles. This is a parameter you receive, so you just fill in that list. And again, this is even more silly than the user password check. If it's admin, it's admin. Well, okay, fine, good. Okay, notice that you can also get the session. That's true for every, inside every method. You can do, you can say, give me the session of the current thread. And then you can do things like put, read, and write data to the session object. And that's per user. So the next time you get a request from the same user, you retrieve the same session information. Then you can handle the specific authorization at the, uh, again, at the global level. Or the other thing you can do, you can go into server methods and say, hey, this eco string requires an admin. I don't know reason and while this other method is good for for everyone for a standard user but you must be locked to execute the method and this other method reads session information reads the username 
So you can store per use per session information on, on the server. By default, the section expires after 20 minutes, and you get a you can install an anonymous method that is executed when the session starts and when the session expires to kind of customize your session information and keep track of who is online or things like that. <coughs> OK? So, and now if we run it, I think we should ask for the password. Let's see, reverse string. Undef oh, OK, well, after the second step. Marco, Marco, ha. And now it can, it can actually do the operation. Now you generally provide a JavaScript user interface for managing the login. This is kind of done the hard way, but whatever. OK? The other things that, thing that you get kind of for free is uh, a kind of debugging mechanism. It's a second page that you get by default. Again, I need to log in. <coughs> and what you can do, you can Get, it's, again, it's a debugger tool. Don't give it to the end user. You can see the available method, the parameters they require, and call these functions. Now, this one I'm not authorized. So it actually doesn't work. Wah! Yeah, yeah, we get an accept, uh, uh, server side exception. If we, uh, three, fine. And then we get, uh, it's not authorized. So I'm logged. I can call some of the methods. There are other methods I cannot call. But if I log in again as admin, and the password is admin, same as the username, now I can call uh, each method. And also get the username, admin, admin. OK. Um, now the question becomes, OK, we've got some of the ideas about the server. I haven't covered that all the types you can move. And it's quite rich in terms of the type system. But why do we want to use JavaScript on the, on the client side? Now, this slide was useful two years ago when I started. Now it's, of course, we want to use JavaScript on the client side. It's, it's become obvious. But there's been a real explosion of JavaScript. JavaScript works on browsers, works on phone browsers, works almost everywhere. Uh, there have been improvements in libraries, uh, meaning much better li JavaScript libraries. The browser speeds over the last couple of years have improved about 10 times in terms of processing JavaScript. Even Internet Explorer is getting quite fast with JavaScript. It used to be very, very slow. So it's, JavaScript is growing. It's really exploding as a world. So I don't think I have to really push for this. Um, the JavaScript support that he ha has come in the form of this proxy generator um, that gets updated automatically. And some of the code that is generated at the beginning, in fact, if we get here, if you go to look in the source code of the project we have just created, there's actually quite some, some JavaScript. There, are, there is support for base64 encapsulation to make the calls for the callback frameworks that I'm going to cover. There is a JSON processor and a server function executor. So there, a there are a bunch of support files. Now, there's one significant change in XE2. Not only you get the functions, the JavaScript files, but you also get the minimized version of the JavaScript files. They're the same exact content without the spaces and the new lines and the comments and everything else. But the, th the thing is that now what we have to deploy is much smaller. So rather than 28 plus 18 plus 23, we are down to like 7 plus 4 plus 8. So we, the JavaScript we have to deploy is a fraction of what would have been without the mini, mini, minified version. There is another big change for the people that have more knowledge. Uh, JSON 2. Uh, now this is a bit confusing because in, in Delphi XE, there was JSON min. <laughs> now there is JSON2 and JSON2 min, but they, it's not the same min. I mean, it's, there was a, it, it, somehow in Delphi XE, they used a very odd and strange JavaScript library to uh, pr process the JavaScript object to JSON conversion back and forth, because that's what you have to do. You receive a string, and then you convert the string back into a, server, a JavaScript object in memory. And then you process the object in memory and you save it to a JSON object to send it to a JSON string to send it to our 
Delphi server. So that mapping was based on a library that used a very odd approach, like automatically extending all JavaScript objects, and it was incompatible with most of the existing JavaScript libraries. It was incompatible with jQuery, incompatible with other libraries. It was, and, it, and then it was an open source project managed by no one. Now they've moved to JSON 2. JSON 2 is the JavaScript project, the JavaScript version of JSON processing based of JSON.org the official JSON reference. So that's the implementation. And it's 100% compatible with any other library out there. So it's, the thing is that it requires a function call. So you have to call stringify and, and JSON. I mean, you have to explicitly request the operation. But that makes it more compatible. So the, 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 other, function, the other JavaScript files have been changed just to support the new, the new JSON2 uh, version. And that's something I've asked for, so I'm very happy. Um, so a few new, of the new things in XE2, JSON, uh, the new JSON processing file, the minified JavaScript files, you can provide extra parameters, like you can uh, have a URL that is that classic URL, question mark, extra parameters, and inside the method source code, you receive the, the parameters up to the question mark, but then you can ask for the other optional parameters. When you want to have optional parameters in a function, that's why it's handy. In Delphi XE, by default, if you add question mark something, it will just crash with an access violation on the server, which was a bit of, well, of course, we, you could un intercept it before and change things, but it was a bit uh, annoying. The other thing, at the opposite, you can customize the JavaScript response. Say, the JavaScript response hasn't got the result object and that structure, but it's a custom thing. Now, both features are quite relevant because they let you support third-party libraries that require a given input and output parameters. Rather than forcing the JavaScript libraries to make the call in the form of Delphi ones, you keep them as they are and you do the processing on the Delphi side. So you, ad you adapt your code to the given Delphi library or, or grid or whatever rather than the opposite. Um, so that adds a lot of flexibility. You can save objects in session data and there have also been some extensions to the Colbert architecture that I'm not going to, to, to cover. So it has been, it's, it's kind of bug fixing and improvement. The real big thing is the connectors for Android. But there's been work going on. So I had, I think I had like five feature requests and I got four and four went through. So I'm quite happy. I mean, 80% of my requests went into the product. 